Hey folks, Quilly Team here, and welcome to Let's Try Super Auto Pets. I am a big fan of auto, auto battler games, and as such, several viewers have suggested that I give Super Auto Pets a try here. Um, my favorite auto battler will probably for a long time still be Dota Underlords. It is a shame the game has been dead for over a year now, uh, so I've had to relegate myself to spending more time in um, Hearthstone Battlegrounds, which is fine, but... Uh, I did like Underlord a lot more. So anyway, I'm very eager to be giving Super Auto Pets a try. Now, I have played three or four matches so far just to try to get a handle on the user interface, but I certainly don't know all the combos and whatnot. The game is free. They do sell um, extra pet packs and things like that that you can unlock, which are the units that you can use. You can see I've got 66 points here from the games that I have played. Um, the default play mode seems to be Play Arena here. It's got the biggest button. By default, you only play against your own pet pack, so you don't have to worry about you know um, the pay ones being more potent or something like that, for example, uh, because uh, you're, you're just gonna be playing against the one you own by default, unless you go and click, you can play against everything, but we'll just leave that over there. There's also the versus mode over here where you can create your custom games and whatnot, but we'll go into arena mode. Now what's interesting about Super Auto Pets is that it is asynchronous. There is no timer going on here while I try to decide what I'm going to purchase to build my board. Instead, when hit and turn, it's going to, uh, I assume, find another player waiting to be matched who is the same level as me, and then we will battle each other. Of course, this being an auto battler, the battle happens automatically without any input from you whatsoever. All you're trying to do is assemble a team. So we've got space for five pets over here, and we've got the shop over here. It costs three gold to purchase anything from the shop, whether we're talking about a pet or the items that we can feed them. We do have 10 gold per turn. We start with 10 health. At the start of the game, if you lose a battle, you lose one health, but that will quickly go up. You'll take more and more damage as you go up higher levels. And uh, you, you quote unquote win when you hit if you win 10 matches before you die. Uh, although for every match you do win, you do get a certain amount of currency, those points that you can use to unlock cosmetics and whatnot, which is kind of cool. So we are currently a level one uh, shop over here. Uh, we have access to level one pets or tier one pets, I suppose I should say, because you can level them up. So we've got fish over here. When the fish, not when we level up, not when our shop increases in tier, but when the fish himself levels up, uh, they will give all friends, that's all friendly creatures, plus one attack and plus one health. The otter, whenever I, when I buy it, it gives a random friend, plus one, plus one. Uh, I don't know what happens if you buy the otter if you've got an empty board. I don't know if he can target himself. By saying friend, I suspect he may not target himself. And we've got the mosquito over here, start of the battle, deal, deal one damage to a random enemy. Uh, I don't think the mosquito scales very well, but it certainly could work early on. Now, these cost three, I do have 10. What I could do is I could buy two, roll once, which only cost me one gold, and then pick something else over there, maybe look for a pair. Um, and I can also buy these apple, the apple here, for example, at three gold to give us pet plus one plus one. Um, what I'll do, tell you what, I'll buy the fish. It's got good base stats. We'll go ahead and buy that. Um, I'll buy the otter. So presumably we'll be buffing the fish and it does. I'll roll here and see if we can pair up or get anything a little bit more interesting. Oh, the ant's quite nice. Maybe the pig does sell for more gold. Normally these guys will sell for one gold. The pig will give us one extra, uh, when we sell it. What I'm going to go ahead and do is reposition these guys. I'll pick up the ant first. We'll put it in the front. So when it faints, when it dies, it'll give plus two, plus one to some other friend behind it. Uh, so it won't be wasted. That's all my gold. I'm going to hit end turn. Now, normally, oh, there's actually a screen. Oh, shoot. I put it on automatic. You get a screen where you get three uh, adjectives and three nouns to choose from to make your team name. There's an option to make it automatic. Let me turn off the autoplay here so we can talk about what's going to go on. You, there's an option under gameplay name auto picker, which I turned on to make it automatic uh, because I was like, oh, you know what? It'll just add some extra variety. So I am the squeaky mouth and apparently I'm against the salty beavers over here um and yeah so what happens is the pets just attack each other in the front so starting from the front work their way back so here my three four fish is going to attack the three three mosquito so the mosquito will die the fish will be left with one health and then the duck will move forward they'll attack each other like that i guess you click anywhere actually to advance one step well, there we go victory and we're good over there uh the shop refreshes we can freeze things it is um 
you do freeze individual stuff, and if something's frozen, you can also re-roll, and it keeps that one uh, static. You can unfreeze it. You can even freeze your items as well, which is kind of interesting. I do have two ducks over here. Ducks, when I sell a duck, it gives shop pets plus one, plus one. Uh, so it can be a fine thing to fill out our board right now. Might not be too uh, too shabby. Um, the pig's also okay as sort of a generic uh, board filler over here, because then you can sell it later on for a little bit more value. Um, uh, one thing is, uh, if you get a triple... You can, okay, so you can, I should I should just show an example. This is probably not a good idea. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you. I can put a duck down. If I buy another duck, I can put it here and that's fine. Or you'll see there's a funky little item over uh, icon over here, which allows you to merge two dudes together like that. Um, so it gives the original target a stat boost and you can see this little XP bar fill up. If you fill up the XP bar, which I believe is every three, at least at the start, then the pet will level up, which will increase its ability potentially, but also will give you one extra pet in your shop that's of a higher tier. Let's see if we can find a duck as an example. There you go. Again, this is probably not the correct way to have made this play, but it should demonstrate how this works. So if I go ahead and target the duck over here, it is now level two duck. You see if I sell it, it'll give uh, the shop pets plus two, plus two instead. And it did uh, give me a tier two friend, a tier two pet over here, which is a dog. Uh, this dog's ability is when another friend is summoned, uh, this will gain plus one attack or plus one health. So some of these critters, some of these friends, when they die, or when they faint, I should say, um, they uh, they summon something else, which is what the dog would trigger over here. I don't know if we're gonna be building that sort of summoning stat over here. I might get a second ant. So I'm going to freeze this because I am out of money. We'll keep the ant around. We'll do that again. And actually, I probably should have reordered things. I suspect this is not the winning way to order. Um, I suspect what we're doing here is non-correct. You can see there's no reason that you have to merge up all your pets. This guy's collecting a bunch of otters over here. Here, we'll turn on the autoplay so I don't have to keep clicking step by step. So let's hope we can recover from our, let's say, unoptimized picks early on here just to to give some demonstration. I don't I don't know that leveling up the duck is the right idea, but we did lose some health. There we go. Now we have leveled up our, our shop. Uh, so we've reached turn three. So we have tier two animals are unlocked um, like the dog. In fact, this just refreshed and we got another dog and another mosquito. Um, do I want to get the ant? Maybe. Uh, honestly, I think it's kind of okay. We'll put it here for now rather than merge up because then we get, I think, a 3-2 ant, but it would have exactly the same ability. Now we get to take advantage of the fainting power twice in a row here. Um, the honey does summon another pet. So if we did want to do a summon base thing, for example, with this dog, um, we could give something up in front a a pet B, which will count as a summon, which will trigger the power on the dog over here. Uh, don't know if that's like a power move or not. I think I'm just going to roll here and see if we can shake out something slightly more interesting. I don't think I want to buy another duck. The hedgehog is interesting because it does do damage to absolutely everything. Um, there's also the peacock. peacock. Whenever it gets hurt, it gains more attack. Now, let's start with a decent amount of health. Um, but let's talk about these items over here. So the cupcake gives a pet plus three, plus three until end of battle. The meat bone. Now, I don't know if there's a way that it like actually indicates the difference. Um, this is like a held item. Um... Pets can only carry one held item. And I'm not sure if there's a visual cue as to what's a held item or not. As far as I know, the cupcake is a big boost, but yeah, it is only a single battle as far as I understand it. Um, and it can help you if you've got a particularly weak board that you're not terribly happy with, for example. Really no reason for me to keep the otter around. Um, so I could make room for something else. I don't, I don't know if I want to do any of these things. I'm going to roll again. I know this is probably a terrible idea, but we've got that. There's some funky summons here. The rat actually summons something for the enemy. Sleeping pill is odd because it kills or faints one of your pets. Why would you do that? Well, sometimes you might have a pet like this one, like the ant. Give a, fr a random friend plus two plus one. If I go and, and sleeping pill the ant now, it'll give a, a plus two plus one to a pet that sticks around from round to round as opposed to just that particular combat. Friends sold, give a random friend plus one health. I mean, I could do a little bit of that, I guess. I don't know. There's there's not a lot of terribly exciting stuff over here. Um, what I could just do is so I'm gonna I'm gonna sell the otter. Hopefully the front, the stats land somewhere useful. Oh no, that was on buy, so it doesn't matter. Do I want to buy the rat? I mean, it's a four or five. It's pretty beefy. It does give uh, the enemies something, but that's not really a big deal. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. We'll roll again. 
Um, I kind of like the swan early on. Oh, the other thing I can do is I could combo the uh, the ant together um, to get a level two. I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to freeze this ant so that we can do that. I'm going to go ahead and sell the duck, which will give stats to someone. Or give, get stats to my shop, which is nice. We'll grab the swan, because 4-6 is pretty good stats right now, and it'll generate more gold for us. We want the ants up front. Other than that, I guess I'm just going to sort them based on attack power over here. So the ants will die, and then feed everything else. Um, I'm not really looking to save the beaver, even though it did get the extra stats um, from the uh, from the uh, whoever we sold. I don't remember. But um, I'm just going to spend my gold on a roll. We'll keep the ant around over here. And yeah, nothing else worth freezing, I would think. I don't know. We'll see. Although, um, I may have wanted to freeze the sleeping pill. Because what I could have done is leveled the ant up to two. And then sleeping pilled it to give a permanent stat to something. Let's go. Giving some stats down the line. This guy's going to summon a honeybee. And he's got the horse, which is going to give the summon creatures extra stats. There you go. He gets the dirty rat over here, which isn't really a problem for us at all. All right. We defeated the sulking housewives. Excellent. So, yeah, we get the extra gold over here. We can go over our limit. Uh, unlike in, for example, Hearthstone, where that is a hard limit over there. Um, all right. What we're going to do is I'll, I'll go ahead and merge the ants into one group here. Um, it could permanently give something plus four, plus two if we sleeping pill it, but it's, I mean, these things aren't really god tier. Uh, friend eats shop food, give it plus two health. Now that I kind of like. Tell you what we're going to do. We're going to grab the rabbit. I'm going to throw it in. Let me re-roll first before I do anything. Deal damage to the friend behind the hedgehog. I could get another fish so that we could level it up, but I, I don't think we're going to be keeping it around. We could keep the swan around for just some economy for a while. You have a bunch of stats, but I'm mostly eager for you to... I don't know. You've leveled up. You do give a fair amount of stats. Tell you what. Let's just give you an apple. And then we'll re-roll you. And yeah, the rabbit gives you extra food over there. Uh, a couple of beavers, the peacock. Yeah, I'll go ahead. And again, what I'm going to do is sort of sort you based on attack damage over here. But we do need some sort of synergy, some sort of combo going on relatively soon. Hopefully we can find something. Uh, so he's going to have his cricket. So this cricket has a strength of four, but it does attack for five more because it's got the uh, the meat and some of the zombie cricket here. But, okay, he's got a lot of summons. He's got a horse and a dog to combo with summons, and he's got some front summons. Who doesn't love a summoning setup? But it looks like we are going to go ahead and dominate this just fine. We we don't have any, like, combos or synergy or anything going on like that, but we do have a heckin' lots of stats going on. So there you go. It doesn't matter how much we survive by, as long as we have at least something, we will get the trophy and not take any damage. Good. All right. Tier 3 shop. We got salad, give two random pets, plus one, plus one, and then we still have the cupcake over here. Um, I'm tempted to get the extra swan. Kangaroo, friend ahead attacks, gain plus two, plus two. Uh, I mean, that will embiggen itself a lot. Uh, I think it's time to get rid of the fish, if we want some room. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab you. I will get rid of the fish. I'm going to grab the kangaroo, and then I think I'm going to eat the salad. Well, I mean, the spider's pretty good, too. Friend ahead attacks. Okay, nice stats on you is pretty good. It is random. There might be some stuff we don't want it to land on. So I'm going to salad bowl. Hope it doesn't land on the rabbit. It did not. Cool. Because then I'm probably going to sell the rabbit and replace... Well, I, I suppose I could... I can re-roll, sell the rabbit, and buy whatever's best. Uh, which, there isn't anything terribly exciting here, but I might get another rat. Just, again, some raw stats for now. We'll sell you. Get another rat. Friend ahead attacks. So, in theory, this would be good with kind of summoner, because then it would be able to trigger multiple times. But we don't have that right now. So I guess we're going to go with this. 
I have to be all right. Yeah, not really generating any combos or synergy. Might have even missed something along the way. I'm going to put fast forward on just to burn through these attacks as quickly as possible. This one's got melon armor. She's gonna, not going to take any damage right there. Melon armor, very, very good. Well, I mean, despite that we've got nothing fancy going on, we are still smacking everyone's butt. So that's something. And we are getting a little bit of extra gold from the swan. Salad bowls over here. Blowfish, when it's hurt, it deals some extra damage. I do quite like the ox. We could stack another kangaroo. I'm not sure that we've particularly got any synergy with the kangaroo exactly, but um, if we can get someone tough enough to survive multiple attacks, actually the ant might be tough enough as is to do that. Okay, let's salad bowl a couple of times and see where they land. Tough. You're pretty tough. You actually might be able to survive a few attacks yourself. Let me, um, I'll throw an extra kangaroo on him. Snails. If you lost last battle, give all your friends plus two, plus one. Kind of funny, because we could stack these guys. And anytime we lose, we do get overall stronger. I don't know if that's really a winning thing. Okay, you've got the... Mo okay, no, we need the ant to go first, because we do kind of want it to die. And then you've got the most health, so you might get to attack the most often. So the kangaroo might get the better benefit from that. Right now, I don't think there's anything we need to lock. Although it would be good maybe to throw the meat bone on something eventually, but... Let's let's wait. We might be able to get some higher tier uh, stuff. Uh, what do I quite like? There's one that reduces the damage you take by two. Which, admittedly, as the game goes on, becomes less valuable. All right, stats last in the kangaroo, which might be really good. You're going to do that, which is going to give stats there. You're going to do that, which will give us stats there. You're still alive, which is great. Okay, kangaroo got a lot of stats. And then we have to kill the dirty rat over here. Which isn't really doing anything for us. But at least our own rat is its pretty beefy. Has gotten a few stats along the way. Uh, I do like the canned food when you get it as early as possible. Give all current and future shop pets plus two plus two. Seems like a pretty good investment right now since we do have a lot of health. Um, I guess there's no reason not to level up the swan for more money. It also gives us a um, uh, tier five unit over here. Friend faints gain plus two plus one. So we want this to be the last person on the list. And actually, if we did have a summoner deck, that would be really useful for us. Uh, let's go ahead and do this. We'll go and throw you in here. And if I had more money, I could just throw an extra swan over here. Wouldn't level it up, but it would give us a little bit more stats. Um, I think what I'll do is I'll just roll and we're going to look for a pair. I guess I could have frozen the extra swan. At some point, the swan's got to go away. It's good for economy, but that's it. Let's freeze the pair. If we feed the worm, it starts getting insanely strong. Now, we still could do summon stuff because the shark would get especially good with that. I thought the peacock started as a 1-6. Oh, no, we, we leveled that up because the stats are there. I guess the worm starts as a 1-1. One, one. I guess we just get the worm and just keep feeding it food. We could put it in front of the kangaroo. Super buff worm that keeps attacking, keeps surviving, and then the kangaroo gets stats after it. It's kind of maybe a combo. I mean, that's not, it's it's four points of stats, the salad bowl. It, we don't necessarily get to control where it lands, but it's not too shabby. All right, I'll freeze you. Um, there's no real reason for us to keep the rat other than it's, again, it's not terrible right now. I don't think I need to freeze anything else. All right, let's go with this. It's a simple game. You wouldn't need a lot of time on your turns. But at the same time, if you take less turn, you don't have to wait for everyone else to take their move either. That's the thing. Without a timer, like, yes, you have the luxury of taking time when you need it. But also, it means you don't have to uh, you don't have to be waiting impatiently while someone else is doing stuff. Okay, that was a really effective fish in the front. This guy's got a lot of stats. We're obviously going to get our butts whooped over here. Uh, because we cannot kill his entire stack, unfortunately. So we're going to take, what are we taking now? Three damage? Yeah, we're at six health over here. Ooh, I do like the monkeys. Give the rightmost friend plus two, plus two. So whoever's at the front of the list. Okay, I think it might be time to get rid of the swan despite the money. Or the rat, actually. Uh, the rat's not any better than the swan, and the swan at least gives us cash. So I'm going to sell you. 
Do we tr do we do monkey things for stats? I mean, maybe. I think we do want the worm, like, kind of up front. We want to feed it as many stats as possible. Is it time to get rid of the ant? Because my thinking is, we put the kangaroo right behind something that's going to get a crazy amount of stats. Which the monkey is going to provide. And the worm does scale very, very well. Do I just get rid of the swan instead of the ant? No, I think I'm going to get rid of the ant. We're going to get the worm, put it up front. Shops with food. Um, mm, no, we're in a salad bowl. Good, it did hit the worm, so he'll get the extra stats. We're going to give him the pear as well. There we are. And we're just going to keep feeding the worm. Okay. And then he's going to get a ton of stats, which benefits the kangaroo as well. There might be someone else that'll that'll fit better. We can always sell the swan for some extra space later on, too. Finding an extra copy of the worm would be really good, too, because I'm betting it will gain even more stats from eating. Now, the shark... Again, we don't really have shark synergy because we don't summon our own stuff here. Now, we did get a little dirty rat. That's not going to make a difference here. Okay, another loss. We can only lose one more match. Uh, the whale is very good. So, I think both of these are held items. Now, it's got the target and the dot, dot, dot. Now, if I, I do this, it'll say it'll replace the splash attack. But let's compare the apple. See, the apple looks exactly the same. So, I don't know. May, maybe it's stuff that's in the parentheses. I don't know how to differentiate a held item versus one like it, that that that's normal until it's placed once it's placed it's pretty obvious because you get the icon and then you get that little side panel um, display over there uh we are definitely going to get another monkey reveal a leopard now this is something that would scale really well with huge amounts of stats but i'm not sure that we've got the setup that would help with that um what i might do is maybe now's the time i'm going to sell this one i'm going to get a second shark we can always merge them together as well. But for now, the sushi, we're going to hope it hits the worm. Good. Right, replace the shop with milk. All right, we'll go with this. This probably is going to be our final round. Maybe I should have reworld more to get a second level um, kangaroo. We'd have to hit two worms to level that up a second time. Oh, actually, we've got a good amount of stats, unless there's a bunch of synergy. You're going to summon a bus. Okay. Not too shabby. Yeah, we don't we don't have the synergy for sharks, but they do have a decent amount of stats, so it's something. There we go. They'll eat some more. A third shark would be quite nice. We'll definitely make it worth keeping around. Uh, we didn't get that. We could give something the plus five damage. I mean, really, with the splash attack, it's second. It's it's five extra damage to something else. Uh, we should give you the chocolate because we have to feed you, even though that's that's not going to level you up like it would the kangaroo. But I do have to feed you. Let me re-roll this. Wait, do you have an item? Poison attack. Knock out any pet hurt by this. Oh my god! That's very interesting. If we could combine you with something that gives you shield, like if we had turtles or something, but we don't have that. I wonder if it's worth doing canned food at this point. It buffs everything else we'll see in the shop. But it may not matter the same way. Reroll, looking for food to feed you. There we go. Chocolate, give you a stat, and level you up. So now you're getting extra. Um, fly faint, summon a 2-2 fly in its place. Wait, does it also summon stuff? What I'd like to do is feed a pair here, but we don't have enough money. I think I'll freeze the pair. We may as well freeze the monkey, because we can give it more stats. Just keep scaling up. There's the turtle, which gives the friend behind it armor, which is really good. 
I don't know if we're with the the kangaroos really part of our long term plans. The fly might be better. It's a level six. It's only a four four. Summons a two two. I wonder if the two two summons a one one. That would give a crazy amount of stats to the shark. Convert over to some sort of late summoning build. I'm just I kind of want to freeze it just to see what it does. From the main menu, you can see what all the uh, things are. Oh, we do still have. Okay, we'll reroll. Don't need to keep any of this turkey friend summon. Give it stats. Uh huh. Deal five damage, lowest health enemy. That is quite cool. I'm gonna freeze the chocolate. And hopefully we survive for one more turn. And as planned, our worm is getting very big. Although not big enough to survive uh, two rounds of conflict over here, unfortunately. Uh, do we still have it? Oh, we do still have it. Okay. I did not think we were going to survive that at first. All right. Tier six animals unlocked. What's the cat? Food with health and attack effects are doubled. Ew. Get rid of the kangaroo based on this. Friend summon. So that, that would be like the combo for our summons, which we might do. I guess I can merge the, the sharks together. They won't gain as much from their ability, though, because they'll still have the basic ability until they level up. But I could make some space that way. Bit of a gamble. Do I want to get the monkey even? If I'm not, then it's kind of silly to have frozen it because it's just, you know, filling our things a little. I don't know. It might be cool to give it to see if we can get a level three monkey, although it might be difficult to pull that off. Um, hmm. We are very, like, food shopping oriented. So we really should have the cat. I propose... Well, we could consider dropping the monkey in that, you know, we're generating stats other places and it doesn't synergize with the sharks, but it is level two, so I don't think that's the thing. I think we get... Well, I guess first what we'll do is I will go ahead and merge the sharks. Um, we are going to get the cat. Uh, I'm going to feed the pair here because you'll get double value from the stats because of this, and then you get your own stats. Um, I could give the experience... I could use the experience to level the shark up. But I think the thing to do is still to give it to the worm here, because it will still get stats because of its own ability, so I think that's probably better. Um, do I want to sell something by... or do I... well, actually, I don't have enough money for anything. I guess I'll just roll as is. Uh, we've got another scorpion. Seal eats shop food. Give plus... give two random food. Okay, well, I mean, that is good for more food synergy, but we clearly want to feed it all to the worm. Uh, do we want to give you garlic armor? Taking two less I don't think matters as much anymore, and the chili's not even that useful for us. Uh, with what we've got going on. Let's unfreeze the monkey. I think we do want to replace the kangaroo. And it might be with the fly. I'm going to keep the fly frozen. You kind of need another shark. Maybe if I do put the, the fly in. I might use a chocolate on the shark. Instead of on the worm next time. But I don't know if there will be a next time. He's going to take two less, so he doesn't get killed there, which is annoying. No, we're still going to win. All right. Listen, non-summoning shark is actually doing a pretty good job. Um, I think melon armor on the worm actually makes way more sense than the splash attack. Um, so it takes 20 damage less one time. So basically, not literally doesn't take damage from one attack, but fairly significantly so um and it's got a huge attack rating i mean it's like divine shield right so we're gonna do that this is gonna replace what was there before but we get the stats um we're gonna go ahead and do this this is still a priority um double i wonder what happens if you just have two solo cats if it doubles it twice or I, I wouldn't be surprised if having two cats by themselves doesn't do anything i third i assume when we level up the cat it probably becomes tripled like triple value or something. I think the thing to do right now is to just throw the extra cat on here. Or sell off the kangaroo and get the fly just so we can gen. I'm kind of curious as to what the fly does. Although the kangaroo will get slightly more stats now because the worm survives a little bit more. Let's just get the cat. And then reroll again. The leopard's quite cool if you stack a bunch of stats on it because it deals 50% of its attack damage to a random enemy. Leopard plus monkey, put the leopard up front so it gets all the stats, and it can do a lot. I'm going to freeze the pair. Um, I mean, we could throw the bone, the meat bone on something else to give it an extra punch. But I think I'd rather reroll it because we might get something that's better for the worm. 
I mean, the meat bone we wouldn't put on the worm because it would occupy the same slot, but we could put it on, say, the shark or something like that. Uh, what are you? End turn. Copy ability from pet ahead is level one until end of battle. Uh -huh. Honor. Yeah, leopard. Okay. We'll do this. I hope I wasn't supposed to change the order or anything. I don't think so. I think our worm's going to be quite beastly here with the melon armor. Kills you. Takes m dramatically reduced damage. Uh, the snake's quite cool, though. That is a very powerful enemy. I don't know why he's so far up ahead. Oh, it's one friend ahead. It's not just one any friend. Okay. Wow, the worm lasted that long. I mean, he's going to have some stats on the shark, but he's still going to lose to my monkey. Excellent! And then we still have tons of stuff left over. Uh, this is a pretty good run, I gotta say. Half an hour in. Uh, let's give a pet splash. Yeah... I think we drop the pair on the worm. I don't think that anything changes that. Now, the turtle is quite cool because it gives the person, when it dies, the person behind gets the melon armor, the, the minus 20 thing. Um, I think I still like the monkey. It's just like front-loading this worm. And the more front-loaded the worm is, the better the kangaroo is. So I guess we'll do that. You are leveled up now. We've got a second fly. That's quite interesting. Okay, I'm going to roll. I wonder, if the, depending on how these work with the stats, I wonder if the canned food with this is really good. I don't think we want the bee. Although, if I do drop the honey that on some random thing that's going to die at some point, it does make the shark a lot... Well, not a lot better, because it's only plus two, plus one from the extra thing. But if we do find a third shark, we're going to be pretty happy about it. I don't know how much it matters... I don't think I sell the cat. The kangaroo at this point is level two, so I don't think we're looking to sell it as well. Uh, and the monkey, I think I still like the idea of just making this worm as beefy as possible. So, um, well then, am I ever going to get the fly? Well, maybe. At a certain point, the doubling of the stats doesn't matter as much. I don't know, it's pretty good, unless someone starts putting a poison dude up front. But the poison has to deal damage, and the... Melon armor still protects from that, so I guess you'd want to poison dude in the second position after the melon armor goes away. <sighs> Tell you what, let's just can food. We're going to keep these two flies because something might shake out there. We might decide to make a plan. If we, especially if we hit a third fly so we could level it up, we might make some changes. You have to unlock some hats, obviously because they're quite cool. There we go, the worm's still alive. It's gonna kill the next one. Huge value, especially to the kangaroo over here. Getting some nice stats. Beep, beep. Beep, beep. Splash damage killed my monkey. Oh, actually. Damn, we're gonna lose this one. I thought we were gonna win this one for sure. It was looking so good, but that was a lot of extra splash damage. Damn, I was feeling so confident. We needed extra stats on these bad guys. Maybe the flies would have been good because actually the flies could have soaked a lot of that, uh, that splash damage, right? Kill the fly, summon another one, kill the fly, summon another one. What do the, there's a place to check. Pets, full overview. Uh, scroll down to the bottom. Oh, those are items. Fly. Yeah, so, I mean, at higher levels, it does summon a bigger fly. I just wonder if they're same copies, if, if those flies die, they summon more smaller ones. Like, I'm, I'm betting maybe like, I don't know, because the normal it's normally a 2-2. Two, two. It already been buffed to a 4-4 four, four because of what we're doing. It's 2-2 two, two that summons a 2-2. Two, two. Couldn't possibly summon more 2-2s. Two, I don't know. I, I, they have the same name, but obviously you can't be in a situation... Oh, wait! It's when a friend faints. Oh, I completely misread how the fly works. It's not when it faints. Because a lot of things are like that, right? Um... Isn't there like a really... Oh, like the cricket. When it dies, it summons a 1-1. One, one. No, this is when someone else dies, it summons a thing. Friend faints, summon a 2-2 two, two fly in its place. But I'm assuming... So, okay. So it summons a new 2-2 two, two fly. So I have... My worm dies. It summons a 2-2 two, two fly. When that 2-2 two, two fly dies, does this summon yet another one? I'm assuming maybe f there's a difference between a friend and a summon. There must be something like that. 
but it's not very well explained. There's a little bit of that, but it's the sort of thing, as soon as you've used it one time, then you sort of understand how it works. Anyway, I think this is a great, very cute game, and I can 100% see the appeal to it, especially with this uh, Play Arena mode. And yeah, if I create a private game over here, blah, 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 player account. Oh, that's the other appeal. Because of the way the pairings work, I can make a 32 point game. Oh shit, this is what we're gonna use in our multiplayer streams from now on. So there's no password other than the, I guess the game name is the password. Join public, join private. Yeah. So I'd have to hide the game name, which is a little awkward. because so I have to hide this part and hide this part while we're waiting for people to join. Or I don't bother hiding it, and then anyone from chat can join in. Okay. Now I'm seeing why this is becoming that this has become such a hit. Cool. Uh, I think I'm gonna be playing more Super Auto Pets. Now there's no uh, there's no ranking system. That's the only thing we get is like money that unlocks things. Should definitely unlock a hat. I feel I feel awkward being hatless. I could save up huge points for some of the fancier later hats. Maybe I don't buy anything until I get golden poop. I don't know, I kind of like the inventor hat. I don't know if I want to just buy one of the cheap hats. Get a custom background for a board. I don't know. I'm going to save my money for now. We'll see what goes on later on. Thanks for watching. See you then. Bye-bye.